as as the title says, the topic will be uh, Motivic Homotopy Theory of Algebraic Stacks, which is actually uh, my PhD thesis. And I will try to explain what I have done uh, in this uh, in this context. As the title says, that I have somehow uh, tried to construct uh, the Motivic Homotopy Theory for some classes of algebraic stacks, which extends the usual Motivic Homotopy Theory on the level of schemes. And not only just defining it, but also extending all the six functor formalism, which is due to Morel Wojewski and IU in the context of schemes and extending them to this specific class of algebraic stacks. Okay, before uh, going into details, at first I want to spend some time on the motivation. So motivation at first uh, uh, comes uh, uh, from what happens in the context of uh, the classical derived categories. So, so the motivation like, uh, so like derived category associated to an algebraic step. So if you if one wants to define a derived category associated algebraic stack, one can try, one can try to define it by constructing by taking the derived category. Okay, so in this case I will consider only elliptic sheets. That's what I'm looking into especially by derived category of the abelian category of LID sheaves. If one does this, then this such a definition is not very informative and it's kind of ridiculous uh, in a sense that if my algebraic stack is BGM, then some elliptic sheaves will be just uh, GM equivariant elliptic sheaves over a point by definition of what an elliptic sheaf on such a stack is. And then considering the derived category of BGM will be actually the same as considering the derived category of a point. And and such that, but we know uh, from classical uh, theorems uh, due to Totaro and other people that the cohomology of B BGM is actually a polynomial ring concentrated in degree two, which cannot occur in such a derived category of a point. And so such a thing doesn't, uh, such a thing doesn't reflect here. And, and such a definition is not uh, the plausible definition one should work with. Then what happens that Las Laszlo and Olson they actually used simplicial methods to construct derived categories And in specifically, they used what is called the Lis et al site. And such, uh, and such uh, construction of derived categories actually, uh, actually are reasonable. But the problem which happens is that as the Lis et al site, is not functorial, the pullback functor is technical to construct. So there's a huge problem in constructing the usual pullback functor between the derived categories. But still they managed to do it by uh, some technicalities and they give kind of a six functor formalism for constructible sheaves uh, on algebraic stacks. While uh, as this is a problem, then 
finally, work by Liu and Zhang, they used like infinity categories to define these derived categories. Algebraic stacks. In particular, what they did is that we will construct, we will consider the infinity, uh, infinity of the derived category. So, if if we have an atlas. Then the then the derived category that they constructed of X is actually the homotopy limit of this check nerve diagram of all these derived category, where these are the pullback maps. And as this is constructed in such a limit extended way, then uh, the construction of the pullback functor is also canonical. As your pullback functors on each of the products, fiber products of, of your atlases. And this gives, uh, this gives us a pullback functor from uh, in between morphism of stacks. On the level of the life categories. Is it kind of immediate to see that it doesn't depend on the atlas? No, uh, no, no. Uh, it is uh, uh, it is not immediate to see means that's not that's not how you define this. You somehow extend the functor from schemes to stacks. And and if I have to say in words why it is immediate, is because this derived category that we are constructing, uh, we are considering it's a ital sheaf. So, and we have to use that this has ital descent and this gives that, this gives in that it doesn't depend on choice of it. Yeah, well, okay. So uh, Liu and Zhang uh, used uh, this idea of using like, using infinity categories to use this enhanced derived categories and they give a six functor formalism, which when restricted to their homotopy categories uh, agrees with what Laszlo and Olson did. And we uh, want to do a similar kind of process in the business of SH. So, so we have this stable homotopy functor that I like from nerve of schemes of, uh, so schemes uh, CHFD means we are, I'm considering just schemes which are uh, Noetherian and a finite, uh, finite cruel dimension. And this is actually a functor to see edge of PRLSTB. That means these are just presentable, stable, uh, symmetric monoidal infinity categories. And L means that the functors between these categories are co-limit preserving. And this kind of, uh, and one wants to, so the, uh, so one wants, it to extend to algebraic states. And do you consider here GM stable uh, SH or just S1 SH? GM S1, um, the GM smash S1, okay. the, yeah, the P1 actually. Mm -hmm. Uh, one wants to extend it to all uh, some. Uh, one wants to extend it to algebraic stacks, but the problem is like if if we define S H as the as this uh, as like as this limit over check nerve, then this depends on the choice of atlas 
for any algebraic step. If we do this, it actually depends on the choice of a class. And this is because of the fact that a sage satisfies Nishnevich descent and not eta. So as our derived category satisfies this ital descent, this somehow gave us this independence. But as I say, it doesn't satisfy ital. So if we do this exact same procedure for every algebraic stack, this doesn't work. And that's why we somehow restrict it to some specific class of algebraic stacks where such a choice of atlas doesn't depend. So this gives that we define SH on specific class of algebraic stacks, which we write it by NIST log ST. And in this uh, and in this construction, it doesn't depend on some choice of a specific choice of atlas. It's not we are just taking any arbitrary atlas. Some some stories of atlas which always exist in such collection of algebraic stacks, and this I will of course define this category in in the later part of my talk. But uh, just to make you just believe why such a Nishnevich uh, this Nislock ST is interesting, that uh, all local quotient stacks uh, quasi separated algebraic spaces are all in this locality. So as local as as category of local quotient stacks is quite an interesting category, which suppose it includes all the modelized stack of vector bundles, G bundles, Higgs bundles. And for invariative purposes, we want to consider this modelized stack of stable maps, which are already quotient stacks by it's because it's a PGL and torso. And all these examples include in this Nislock ST. So one can expect to do some um, SH business on such uh, on such uh, specific stacks. And hence, uh, this category is interesting. And the theorem, uh, which I will state later, it, it will be just saying that uh, this SH, uh, the six functor formalism of SH on the level of schemes extends to this Nislock ST. So we have an SH uh, functor there, and also we have all the six functors which extend there, and some reasonable uh, uh, reasonable properties between them, like base change, uh, base change projection formula, localization, homotopy purity, uh, homotopy homotopy invariance, and all such. Well, up to now that was the that was the kind of the motivation, and now I will somehow. Uh, go into this, uh, go into defining what this Nislock ST is. And this uh, brings us to our, um, brings us to the second section. Enhancement of sheaves along callings with local sections. Just to make clear, uh, you say that you want to consider on the, the, only some kind of uh, stacks. Yes. Uh, and uh, do you plan to consider for this kind of stacks uh, any atlas or? No, no, a specific one? choice of atlas. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yes. just if you take some etal cover of a scheme. No, no, no. Uh, it, it, is not, it, it, it is. Uh, it is not. A, it is not just any choice of a smooth covering. It okay, will be a specific. Kind of uh, it will coverings. be a specific. It will be a specific smooth covering related to this uh, related to the property of such stacks. Okay. Yeah, yes. Right. Okay. So enhancement of fields along coverings with local sections, and this somehow the first section, uh, first subsection will be morphisms admitting T local sections. So the setup is we have a C small category, uh, C a category with uh, products 
small co-products and your T, a collection of coverings. That means that C comma T is a site. Then what I define is that a morphism F from X to Y and C admit T local sections if there exists a family of coverings uh, over Y such that so we have Y, we have all this collection of coverings. And we have, um, and we have morphisms SI from YI to X. So X, this is a, such that this comes in. So a covering, uh, uh, so a T local section means a morphism which um, admits T local section. That means, uh, so there exists a covering in your, uh, in the topology that you're considering such that over that covering it admits sections. And an example of this will be every smooth subjection it all locally as a section. So every uh, smooth subjection, uh, uh, so you have a smooth morphism which is subjective, then there exists an ital, uh, there exists an ital cover such that it admits sections. So this is a classical example where if your T is your ital topology, then a smooth morphism will be admitting T local sections. And then, then what happens is, is that T local sections are stable under full bags and compositions. And this gives us the corollary that the category C with coverings, which you define by curve log of tau, uh, curve of T log of X to be all such collections, such that this admits T local sections. This is a site. That means C call T log is a site. That's uh, yeah. So this is one kind of topology that if you have one topology T uh, on your category C, then you can give another topology by this T log kind of a setting, and this will just come into help in the. Um, this will just come into help because that's how this NIST log ST is defined. And yeah, so also one can show that this, I will just say verbally, is that if you have a sheaf uh, which, has, uh, which, has, uh, which has descent along morphisms in your T, then this sheaf will also have descent along morphisms uh, which admits T local sections. So they are kind of the same. And now the next. Subsection will be category of stacks meeting T local sections. So the process uh, of why this, uh, why we need such an abstract setting, like we start with a, just, just some ambient category and we want to do such business is the following that we want to somehow 
uh, have to extend this kind of formalisms from schemes to algebraic stacks. But as we know that by passing to, for to directly to algebraic stack, one needs to go to algebraic spaces at first. So we have, uh, so we at first extend such a formalism from schemes to algebraic spaces. And then we apply the same kind of extension, uh, extension procedure from algebraic spaces to algebraic stacks. So ultimately we will have kind of an extension uh, kind of a theorem, which you can apply just uh, in your specific setups some number of times to get whatever, uh, to get what kind of extension you want on, on, some, on some kind of category. So that's why we are working with such an abstract setup. And this will ultimately uh, get clear when I state this, this extension procedure, which will be a theorem. So definition to see tau be a site, then a category of stacks admitting T local sections. What is this is a two one category, which I write by STC with a full D faithful functor I from C to STC uh, satisfying STC admits fiber products and products and this is an important thing that given any object x in STC there exists a morphism little x from x to x where your x is in the ambient category c such that for all morphisms y from x prime to script x, where x prime is in C, the fiber product x prime, which is from x prime tensor script x over x, x prime is a morphism. in C and it admits T local sections. And we call such a morphism X prime to be an atlas admitting T local sections. Should, should it be X and not X prime? I mean, on the, on the last line. This one? Uh, this one? No, no, on, on the last line, when you say that you call such a morphism. Uh, yeah, oh, sorry, sorry. Yes, yes. Uh, oh, yeah, little X. Yeah. X, yeah. And the diagonal, Uh, is representable in C. So here, yeah, representable means uh, in the similar as a context of algebraic stacks. That means when you take a morphism of any object in C to to this fiber pro, uh, to x cross x, the fiber product will be also an element in C. As you can see, that this definition has quite a lot of similarities with what algebraic stacks are and how these things are defined. So. That's how this definition is somehow, uh, that's how we came up with this definition because we kind of want all such properties, but we want to have not just arbitrary at last where we just have smooth subjections, but we want to have some kind of uh, choice there on some topology. So this T local sections comes right uh, in that setting. And as, uh, and, and, then, and then there's a lemma 
Okay. So in this setting also, we can define uh, what does uh, amorphism admitting T local section means in this category of stacks admitting T local sections. That means if you have left F X to Y amorphism in, F, in STC, we say it admits T local sections if there exists an atlas y to y admitting t local sections and a morphism s from y to script x such that f comes with s is y is the same definition that we have on the on the level of uh, schemes, but we just uh, we just somehow we need that in the context of stacks. And in the same way as the T local sections in the category of schemes form the topology, and you can form a site. And so in this setting also, we can also form a site. That means that uh, we have this. Uh, so we have a corollary. This STC with this T log, where this T log is defined in a similar way that it's a collection of morphism stacks such that uh, their fiber uh, such that their core product is a morphism admitting T local sections. This defines something. Okay, so as with all these uh, kinds of abstract definitions, one can actually go into what we call this NIST log ST, this category, what is this? So how we start uh, with this, uh, at first we consider this category of schemes and we have our Nishnevich topology. Yeah. And then we consider STC to be the category of quasi separated algebraic spaces. And this can be chosen for STC as because of the fact that uh, every quasi separated algebraic space admits a Nishnevich cover. And this is due to Knuston. So that every quasi separated algebraic space that means Nishnevich. And then our definition will be the Nislock ST is the 2 1. Okay, so I will write uh, this category of quasi separated algebraic space as ALGSP for the whole talk. Is the 2 1 category. of algebraic stacks for which there exists there exists a smooth atlas admitting Nishnevich local sections. And in this concept of uh, uh, the C and uh, STC, then if we start with C to be our, uh, C to be our algebraic spaces and tau to be the Nishnevich topology, then we can consider STC to be this nice log ST. Okay, so that's the definition of Nislog of ST, and this exists uh, Nishnevich. Uh, so these are just algebraic stacks for which you choose a atlas. Which by definition, it's a smooth uh, subjection, and this atlas 
it meets niche leverage local section that means when you take the final product which is not only just it was not only just smooth but it will also admit uh, niche leverage locally sections and this uh, so example or this will be like all local quotient stacks well this can be proved in the i will not explain the full uh, proof of this but as as first uh, we can see why uh, this admits for just quotient stacks for example so remark so if your x is x mod g then the atlas x to x mod g, that means the standard atlas, may not admit Nishnevich local sections. So this is because suppose if your g is GLN, then this is okay, because then x to x mod g is a GLN torsor, and GLN torsor as g is GLN, which is a special group, this GLN bundles admit sections Jariski locally, so you're you're fine. But what happens when your G is not a special group? Then this GLN bundles just admit sections just ital locally, not just Nishnevish locally. So this morphism to X to X mod G cannot be an atlas that we want to consider. But what we can do is the following. I mean, a simple example here is just Goloak extension of fields, right? Yeah. So if if I start with G to be an affine algebraic group, that means you have an embedding to G to GLN. Then what I can do, I can actually write this quotient stack as, as a quotient stack like this, where you consider X times G times GLN uh, mod G and you quotient it by GLN again. This is this two quotient stacks are isomorphic. And this X times G to GLN, this will be an algebraic space because uh, the action on G on this on this product is free. So this being an algebraic space, by definition of of this, then this uh, this is a GLN torsor by definition, and as this is an algebraic space, I can consider another. Nishnevich cover x prime of this. And this composition is an atlas admitting Nishnevich local sections. So we have uh, so we have to choose such atlases to work. Yes, and that's somehow it is done for quotient stacks and a local quotient stack is just a quotient stack, which is uh, which is just an algebraic stack, which has an open covering by quotient stack. So if you have on even the open cover, then yeah, so you also have for all local quotient stacks. And yeah, as I said before, that vector bundles, uh, modelized like stack of vector bundles, G bundles and all of such nice uh, algebraic stacks that one can think of are in this niche locust. Can you give that's, some non-example? That's a question that I have no answer. <laughs> well, that because it's it seems like that every stack you consider may have, but there is no criterion up till now. I have means there are examples where there are examples which where one can think of that it's hard to say what it is, but it's still not known. I cannot say anything uh, in clear generality. Okay, so yeah, so this somehow ends uh, ends the definition of this log st, and now it is the it is this extension procedure that I would like to see. So this will be. extension of sheaves. 
from schemes to all the good things. So we have the theorem, which is C tau to be a site, and it's the C category of stacks admitting the local sections. Let F from the nerve of this category to some infinity category D be an infinity sheaf with respect to this tau topology, then F extends to a sheaf FX on STC uh, with the T log. Moreover, If x to x is an at last admitting t local sections, then this fx of x is isomorphic to the limit. of this tau. Yes, so this is somehow, uh, as, as I said on the, on the motivation part uh, of the derived category that we have this limit construction. So that somehow uh, is, is the statement here, whereas you don't choose just an ordinary atlas, but you choose an atlas which has this T local sections kind of a thing, and one gets such a isomorphism, uh, one gets such an equivalence, actually. Okay, so before uh, I would like to give a brief uh, idea, or let's see, I guess we uh, still have quite some time. Um, the brief idea on the proof of the theorem, but just to say how this proof or are there some similar statements on this. So Liu and Zhang actually have a have this paper, which is was the key inspiration of this uh, enhanced six operations and the exchange theorem for higher art in stacks where they use uh, this language of infinity categories and they develop also much more technical abstract gadgets to extend such formalisms on the context of derived categories, but they also do it in a very abstract infinity setting. And what they call this is program that they have this algorithm, which is called this descent algorithm. And this, the, this theorem is kind of uh, a decent kind of a statement or, or, or it's kind of a similar statement that they have. Whereas uh, the proof is kind of a new proof that we have tried to give. Their proof is, is, is all somehow inspired from their proof, but it's, it is completely new and it doesn't follow anything of what they did. And yeah, we will see more instances of their paper in the later part. Where, where I have to be really, really vague for just time reasons. Okay, so the idea of constructing FX. So as we want is that we want what? We want FX of X to be this to, uh, yeah, to isomorphic to this uh, to this limit over your check cover. Whereas, if we define something like this, then this, of course, intrinsically is depending on the choice of an atlas. 
So it is, it is an intrinsic description and it is hard to see why such a functor can be extended and why we can define such a functor on each and level of every synthesis that we want. And so to do that, what we do is the following. So as we want to have all such kind of atlases, we want to consider a uh, curve of STC, which is actually a subcategory of the infinity category of all augmented simplicial objects of STC. Here, uh, this, uh, this thing is what we call the Duskin nerve. This is just an, just taking, when you take an usual nerve gives an infinity category from, uh, from a small category. This Duskin nerve does the same job and it gives a two, uh, given a two one category, it gives an infinity category out of it. So it's the same thing kind of. And we want to consider all the augmented uh, uh, simplicial objects there, but we want to consider just a full subcategory where the objects are given by uh, just check nerves at classes admitting the local sections. So the objects As because this is reasonable to consider because we want to just see all these uh, all these check nerves because that's how that's the motivation is. At first, we see that we have a map now from curve of STC up to this to this Tuscan nerve. This is because you have an inclusion of the minus one element in this delta plus. This gives you a map. This gives you just the atlas, uh, just the algebra, uh, just the stack here, and the claim, uh, and 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 also let R be a collection of morphisms, which are just morphism between check nerves. Which are just induced, uh, which is just you you have the same uh, algebraic. Uh, you have the same stack, and you consider this morphism between uh, between coverings. So this is a collection of morphisms in in the one simplices of this curve ST. As I and and you can see that P sends any element in R. To an equivalent because it maps just this x and x. As such a as by this property, the claim comes that P is a localization map along the morphisms. That means that this ND STC op is actually equivalent to start with this and you invert all such morphisms. Well, such a claim uh, is kind of, yeah, it's kind of hard to prove and it uses some, some techniques of categorical equivalences and some vibration arguments. But once, if we believe uh, this kind of statement is kind of believable, and if we believe this, then what we are boils, boils down that if now we have this curve STO and we have this in the STO P, and if we construct a map F here, to our target category D, such that F sends R to equivalences, then by, by uh, that it's a localization, 
this gives us a map on f of ext. And this holds, so how we define this f is f is like if you on the level of objects or you can do on the level of n simplices is that f actually takes a word. So if f on the level of objects, which is just a covering or a check now, this actually you send it to limit of this, that's what we want. And then why this is a functorial association, this is because of Khan extensions, actually, indeed. That limit is kind of functorial. This is what Louis does in his uh, section of Khan extensions that you can associate limit in a functorial way. So that's uh, the V of S, uh, that's the definition of F and F sending R to equivalences is actually there we use the fact that you have this descent along T local sections. And that gives you the fact that you have actually your morphism of uh, check covers and this will be an equivalence. This uses this descent argument. So that's the brief idea of constructing this F of X. And as you can see that uh, as, as this kind of description gives you the fact that this F of E of T of a, of x can be computed as this limit. For an R atlas of meeting T local sections. And this somehow doesn't depend on the choice because as you can see that here on the curve ST, it was dependent on the choice, but now with localizing you somehow have this intrinsic independence notion that you want to have. Okay, so maybe I should now. Uh, so now the corollary is what we are interested in is that we want to apply all of these uh, things into our SH context. So this this SH counter. Can I ask first? Uh, yes, yes. A naive question. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, so suppose I have some uh, stack and I have two uh, two atlases with uh, local sections. Yes. Yeah, well, I want to try to see just directly that uh, the definition doesn't depend on the yes. choice of atlas. Mm -hmm. So I have two such atlases, then I can take its fiber product. Yes. Right? And uh, uh, it will have sections. Yes. Right? It is more or less definition of this mm -hmm, mm -hmm. circle sections. And then I want, I just want to say that somehow the, the, the definition for using this fiber product is the same as the definition using uh, each of these the atlases. Yeah. Yes. yeah, basically because uh, a check nerve, if something has a section, then it is contractible, right? Or something like that. Yeah, that's the statement. So, so. So at first, uh, as you somehow pointed it out, so at first we want to, we want to know that this f that you start with is has just descent along t, and we we need to have that f has descent along t local sections, and this is the exact argument that if you have a local section, you can construct a fiber product where one of where this uh, where 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 one of the uh, morphisms will admit section, and yeah. what happens is that if you have a section of a of a morphism. This gives you a split simplicial object if yeah. you are in, if you are aware of this terminology. So it is a split simplicial object that means it's kind of like a split fork that you have in, and a split fork is all, already a limit uh, diagram. Okay. If you have a splitting, it's already a limit. Mm -hmm. This this can be seen, and this is a result of Lurie that if you have a if you have this infinity simplicial generalization of the split fork, which is this split simplicial object, this automatically also gives you, uh, this is also automatically a limit. So you have descent along sections. That's the, uh, that's the punchline. Okay, yeah, yeah, I see. And, I see. And, and, and this gives you also for the independence that if you take and if you take two atlases and you take the fiber product, then these two morphisms, base change morphisms are 
uh, descent along sections and you have descent along these two sections. And so taking limit here and taking limit here are the same. Okay, and yeah. yeah. Okay. This is the kind of the commutativity of limits. And this is also proved in a section of Dury that it uses scan extensions, actually. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so that's kind of the idea. But, but what's the problem happens is like, uh, you can see this thing and this somehow gives you this equivalence uh, thing. But if I didn't do this localization argument and I want to force this each and every time, then you have to remember all these higher homotopies every time. And this gives a whole mess. Okay, yeah, 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 so yeah. That doesn't work by just saying that, okay, I define it on objects, then I define it on morphisms. But every time you have to remember this uh, independence of choice that, mm -hmm. or this, I saw this equivalence that you get from this limit argument. So it's, it's, a, it's a mess, but yeah. That's why this localization argument somehow surpasses all of this uh, already. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks for asking. So uh, the corollary is that we have this SH functor, this extends to an infinity sheaf, which I write it SH e x e of x, which would be from this Tuscan nerve of this lot of it's t to our ambient category, and this has descent along uh, Nishnevich local sections. So this is the definition that uh, we want to consider, and that's that's our definition of SHEXT of x extension. And not only you see that you also get you also get four functors. out of this extension proceeding. So at first you get this tensor functor because somehow you land in this commutative algebra objects. So this gives you this tensor functor and this is the extension of the tensor functor that you have. And you have the pullback functor because that's the, uh, that's what this SH E of X T of X to SH E of X T tensor of y for y to x. And as you are landing in PRL STB, means where you have co-limit preserving, so a joint functor theorem says that you have the push forward functor. And as you have tensor, you also have a kind of, a kind of the dual kind of result that you have internal homots. But you can also see this in the way that internal home actually can be rephrased in saying that this category is closed. And you can show that if you if you have closed categories and if you take the limit of that, that limit is already closed also. It's by this check nerve argument that you have. So we get this for functors already. And now what we are left is this uh, construction of this exceptional functors, lower shriek and upper shriek. And this somehow goes up, goes to the next section. But before uh, just that, uh, pointing it out, I want to just point the developments uh, on, on this kind of SH4 stacks that at first you have remark here. has uh, constructed this equivalent SH of SHG of X, which, which you can also consider as SH of X mod G. But somehow this construction of, uh, of his SH has this two thing that you want this G to be tame, tame group schemes, and, and such an assumption. Uh, so our we don't have such assumptions. We can relax, we can start with any a fine algebraic group and uh, we don't have such assumptions. And also uh, it is unclear, a priori not clear that why it is dependent on the presentation of the step. That what happens that if your X mod G is same as Y mod G prime, then SH G of X and SH G prime of Y are the same or not. This is also a priori not clear, but in our case, this doesn't, de this doesn't depend on the presentation, as we say. And recently, yes, sorry, I, yes. I, I missed probably 
does uh, mark uh, definition concise with yours or no not? uh well that's not known that's Actually, not known okay no i do not know whether there is a relay i think there exists a map but I, we have no idea what this map does like yeah there, and if uh, if x is a point it is also known mm. Yeah, for I mean, BG, for, for, for BG. Yeah, for BGM, I do not know. Like, but I haven't thought about this, actually. Because what he does is actually, if, what he does is actually that when you construct this equivariant stuff, he starts with this pre sheaves of our smooth, uh, uh, G equivariant smooth schemes, and you do this. So somehow starting from the unstable category as a limit, and it is, I guess you can construct one functor, but we have no idea what this functor does. I do not know even for GM, maybe there is, but I haven't thought about it. Okay. And uh, recently, Khan uh, and Ravi, they had this paper generalized homology theories of algebraic stacks where they at first construct this for all kind of scalloped uh, stacks, uh, this is age, but then also in the next part, they have this kind of uh, least extended construction where you somehow say that your know, SH, uh, this is cone, right? This SH cone of X, you can define it by just taking all of the smooth schemes mapping and okay, they, 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 they do not take the tensor, but uh, yeah, yeah. they have this SH, uh, T of, SH of T. And they have defined such a thing. And our question, uh, and then what we thought that if our stack is Nishnevich local, then is such a definition kind of relevant or not? And it turns out that it's, it's the same. So if your X is so corollary, So you have a canonical functor from this limit to this uh, sh txt of x, and this canonical functor is equivalent. Means where x is minus log in minus log. Well, so that's kind of comparisons with what we have in the literature up to now. Uh, well. I guess I still have kind of going to five minutes or five, let's see, to go into our next section, which is where we discuss about uh, exceptional functors. Enhanced operations. Stable from out of it here. Okay, so the goal here is to extend lower shriek and upper shriek. And what we managed to do uh, in kind of uh, in the Kind of all together in a single theorem. Theorem that so we have this in the context of SH, we have this SH lower shriek, which is also a functor from narrow of schemes finite type, but where you want uh, just uh, morphisms which are just separate of finite type because of Narata compactification. And this is a map to. PR LSTB, and you have the SH upper shriek in the same way. So this theorem says that this SH lower shriek and SH upper shriek extend to NISLOG ST, following way that you have SH lower shriek. Uh, okay. SH X lower shriek 
that it goes from this like ST prime to here STB. And we have the SHX log three. Yes, log ST prime of the PR of STB. And where this is the important that this log ST prime R is the category where objects are yeah, are the same as in this log ST. But the morphisms are separated. Uh, morphisms are representable, separated, and finite. So representable is a key thing I have to mention. That means that uh, we have just lower shrift for representable maps, and here. Representable means that it's representable by algebraic spaces or not, not schematic represent that will be also more weaker, but you have representable maps just which are representable by algebraic spaces. That means like to say if you have a map from a stack to a point to your base, then this map is not representable. So we don't have lower shrieks for kind of uh, for maps, kind of maps like this. At least yeah, that's that's kind of a point, but we still have lower sticks for all the representable maps. And these functors satisfy base change and projection formula. So I'm, I'm not writing the exact statement of base change, but I guess it's obvious or it's kind of clear that if you have a Cartesian square of stacks where you have two maps on, on one direction, which are the presentable and select a finite type, then you have this natural transformation between these lower shrieks and upper star. And this natural transformation is an equivalence. And similarly for projection formula, which is which, which what people uh, write this, this F lower shriek, Tensor of F of a star of tensor. This is same as F lower three. This is the projection form. So not only we just extend, we also uh, have these properties also together. And the idea, the key idea, is to use enhanced operation. So what is this enhanced operation map? So this enhanced operation map is kind of a map between two completion sets, which somehow encodes all the six functor, all the six functors and some compatibilities within them. So that's why it's kind of a single map, which when evaluated at specific simplices of your source, gives projection formula, gives base chains, gives all these functors, lower star, upper star, lower shriek, upper shriek, and tensor and all. So that's, it's kind of a one thing which you get. And to somehow motivate, uh, what is this enhanced operation map, which I can, which I will write it. So somehow to motivate what's the target or why, what we want. So, so if you want to encode this projection formula, Then we want to see like what this projection formula actually says. Like this is some kind of natural transformation, but is there a nice way of saying this, uh, what this projection formula means? And this somehow can be said that if you have, um, so if you have F from Y to X, still presentable, separated of finite type, okay. Yeah, let's write, let's do on the level of schemes. Don't have four stacks yet. Finite type. 
Then, of course, we have this f upper star from SH of x to SH of 4, which is, of course, a symmetric monoidal functor. And you have this lower shriek, which is from SH of y to SH of x. Maybe I didn't say this clearly before. When you write this tensor, this is actually the symmetric monoidal category that you consider. And SH of, when you, when you write without the tensor, it is the underlying infinity category of the symmetric monoidal category. Because only upper star lies there as a symmetric monoidal functor, but the other lower star and all the upper, uh, and all the other functors, they lie on the underlying infinity categories because they are not symmetric monoidal. So you have this lower shape. Then uh, you can projection formula is equivalent to say that F lower shape is a morphism of SH tensor X modules. So this is a module of homomorphism in the context of in the language of infinity categories. That means that uh, a module object here can be written as like this, that if you, so this uh, upper star gives you that SH tensor X over SH of Y, this is a module object that because SH tensor X acts on SH of Y by this upper star. And this gives that this SH of Y is a module over this infinity category SH tensor of X. And then you can write this F lower shriek as a map between uh, SH tensor of X, SH of Y. So this is a module. And also SH of X is itself a module over SH tensor of X. So this is the base and you have SH. And this is a map of, uh, and this is a map of modules. So the idea is that this is the map of modules. And what do you mean by modular homomorphism? Uh, if we, if you look at, into that, that when you tensor it, uh, uh, when you when you act by your base ring before and after applying the map, it should be the same. So here, if you see that if if you have if you have lower shriek uh, of some object uh, e, and then you want to tensor it by some object in S H of x e prime, because here the action is this. This should be same as applying e prime before. So you have E tensor and here applying E prime before here is given by the upper star action. And then this gives you this equivalence. So this equivalence giving such equivalence is actually giving that this is a morphism of modules. So one wants to have the uh, target category where we want to encode such thing to be this category. The module objects of PRL STB, where you consider all these presentable stable infinity categories, but you want to, want to consider module objects over such, which are given by these pairs of infinity categories, where one is a symmetric monoidal and one is a this infinity category which has an action over it. So this is somehow the somehow the motivation of the target and the motivation of the source is like to encode base change. One should have synthesis which are made by some Cartesian squares like this. Well, like these are just separated of finite type. So the synthesis should consist of of some some kind of Greek formation of this, and this 
uh, analogy of the source that one, one, one we have to consider not just base change, but how also higher and higher equivalences between these base change. So we want to consider not just one square, but some sequences of squares and some more and more bigger grids. And this gives you that we use the language of multi simplicial or multi marked and multi tiled simplicial sets. So this is extremely reason in the in the paper of Liu and Zhang, but not the paper that I mentioned before. It is this gluing. This is a paper that they had the one before this, gluing of, of restricted nerves along infinity categories. They have discussed what this terminology means. Of course, I'm not going to say anything about this, but uh, let me just. Let me just write uh, what this enhanced operation map is. So, or what we get is like so if you have a functor from this nerve of our schemes to commutative algebra objects of PRLSTV, satisfying some properties, like if we have like. Uh, smooth base change. That means at first I'm assuming that we have this lower shriek, um, uh, 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 lower hash morphism, and we have smooth base change along this lower hash, and we have proper base change and projection formulas also. We have projection formula, we have also projection formula. And also, we have some kind of support property and some other properties, which if I have time, I can tell it later, uh, later what it is. This gives a construction of an enhanced operation map, which you write it by U of D tensor. And this is written by some I'm writing some uh, some abstract nonsense, but let's just not worry about what this uh, what this sim uh, symbols mean at the moment. So this is kind of an abstract map where, as you can see, as I motivated before, that this is uh, the target, so, and the source is somehow constructed by some multi-simplicial gadget which consists of some uh, squares and all of this notion. So that's kind of the motivation. And this gives you actually the lower shriek functors and base change and protection quality. Well, to be Say so. Why? So, what this theorem says more about, like, what, why this is theorem important already on the level of schemes? This is because so if if you if we want if you, if one looks into this motivic homotopy theory business before, classically this was done in the language of model categories where we did this and I then constructed this lower shriek business also in this thesis, but then if one has to see this in the language of infinity categories well easily you can see in the beginning what one should do, like taking precious and taking localizations and these notions make sense. And then this adjoint functor theorem gives you this lower shrieks and lower hash and all this base change maps because you already had on your, on, uh, on your homotopy categories and this extends. But then this lower, uh, 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 this lower shriek construction actually gets very technical. Because when you want to construct this lower shriek, you want to have all these compatibilities between compactifications. And this was somehow in the language of two categories, this is okay because you want to have like, want to see some compositions of compositions and then just worry about this and 
and and that somehow gives you the result. This is how actually in the level of in the in the context of derived category for constructible sheaves, this was done by Delitney in his uh, in his paper of commodity uh, commodities for us. And then this and then one has to do this interlevel in infinity categories. And this gets quite complicated because just two coherence is not enough. You want to have some infinite coherence data. And this uh, statement actually gives you that you have this lower shriek construction on the level of this SH in the context of infinity categories. If you have lower hash for smooth and if you have the lower star and upper star. So this gives you actually all the all the functors that you want for SH for schemes only in the level of infinity categories and these properties of base change and projection formula. So if, if one needs to see this reference, and this is written in the thesis of Robalo, where he does this extensively in the language of infinity category using this uh, Liu and Zhang's procedure of how, uh, of how this uh, statement can be made sense. So that's the idea. That's why this theorem is important. And of course, the proof of this theorem of like how why how is this map constructed and all this involves a lot of simply shell gadgets, which I'm which I'm going to skip out. But I can actually just say what are the simplices, like a lower simplices of this uh, uh, of this source, and at least to give you an idea of what this projection based on projection formula, how it can be seen or Let's see how much we can say about this. So this is kind of the theorem, and this is the thing which I wrote before. And so the zero simplices of this uh, of this uh, of this object are given by just morphisms of schemes, because uh, on the morphism of schemes, and then one, what happens that when you apply your your this EOD, then this gives you actually a morphism, uh, this actually gives you a module, which will be this uh, D of X. So this will be modeled over this, that, that's what in the context of SH, it gets clear. In one simplices, so one simplex will be what? It will be an edge between two zero simplices. So two, two zero simplices are given by these two maps. And you want to see what's a one simplices. So one simplices here is given by this kind of cube, where your this is your source, this is the y zero x zero, and this is your target, and this is given by a cube where where there are many squares. But I have written that this these green maps are actually the representable and separable finite type, and and this and these two bottom squares are Cartesian actually, and this gives you. Uh, when you apply EO of D, this gives you a map between SH of uh, D of X0, D of Y0, and to D of X3. D of so in the special case, when your X0, X1, X2, X3 is spec Z, and uh, you have Y0 is same as Y1, and this morphism's identity, and Y2 is same as Y3. Then this U of D will be a map between uh, will be a map between D tensor of C, D of Y0, and D tensor of C, D of Y3. And this map is actually my lower shriek. So because here, if we have this thing, then you have Y0, Y2, F, Y2, Y0. So this is my representable morphism separator finite type. And once you evaluate on the specific simplex, you get this lower shape uh, morphism. So you can, you can localize into the subcategory of such 
synthesis and you get this functor uh, disclosure. And yes, also evaluating at specific synthesis gives you also the projection map, gives you, uh, if the projection formula gives you, projection formula will be a morphism of modules here and also will give you the base change, which is a bit complicated to write. So now time constraints, I'm not gonna say that anymore. Well, uh, the, so the theorem goes in this way that the idea of the, the uh, idea of the proof of this uh, theorem of extension of SH lower shriek and upper star is to extend EO of SH to EO of SH EXT. So it is again another extension procedure of this simplicial uh, of this enhanced operation map that we have on the level of schemes to the level of stacks. And this, uh, this extension procedure can be done without the fact that we don't use any compactification argument on the level of stacks, that there is no classical compactification theorem on the level of stacks in saying that every, any, any separate finite type morphism has a, such a compactification of open and proper. So we don't have such things, but this extension map can, can be extended and without using such things, we can still get this lower shrieks on representable and separated of finite time. And not only you get this lower shrieks, we also get this base change and this projection formulas also all together. So that is kind of, that is kind of the idea of the proof of the theorem and the proof exactly works in the similar way of this localization argument. There also we can somehow consider some morphism between some covers and we saw that, that, that some kind of covering infinity category and this is a localization and constructor map in the similar kind extension procedure actually. That's also a part of the descent program all the, on this Lee and Chan. And yeah, so the main result is the following that I can just, just, just to say verbally is you have the stable homotopy functor from this SH uh, of this, which extends actually to this SHE of XT such that for every morphism, we have all these six functors where lower shriek and upper shriek are for just representative and separate of finite type. What are the properties we have? We have F upper star is symmetric monotone, which is kind of obvious from flies here. And we have the projection formula. That's what I tried to explain. We have the base change. And we have uh, this kind of natural transformation that we have for the level of, uh, uh, in the classical object of schemes, we have this alpha F morphism, which is a equivalence when F is proper. But we only have this alpha f for f, which is just compactifiable. That means that we just consider only such maps which has this decomposition of open and proper, and then this proof, uh, then this morph, then this natural transformation can be constructed. And we have this purity kind of result that if it's representable smooth and separate of finite type, then you have this self equivalence which comes from this. Uh, from this Tom, uh, Tom uh, transformation of F, and we have this kind of equivalence. And all the basic ideas of how these things follows is because that on the level of each of classes, these statements exist, and somehow we are taking limit over such a classes so that these equivalences can be preserved. Like that's kind of the idea. And in the similar way, we can also show that we have this localization kind of argument and also this homotopy invariance that you have the upper star to be fully grateful for just affine bundles over your stacks. And of course, uh, our SH has descent along uh, Nishnevich local sections. And yeah, that's somehow kind of summarizes all the results. Just, uh, uh, yeah, just maybe I bored you with all this technical Simplicial gadgets, but I wanted to say a bit about it because somehow important in the construction. And yeah, that's it for the talk.